I feel like uh, it was sort of kind of a game where there's a lot of missed opportunities. Yeah, we, we left some guys on base. We yeah. made some outs at third base a couple times, second base, some pretty bad outs. And it doesn't matter who you play. Any, anybody can beat you if you don't take advantage of opportunities. And, uh, you'll just not win the game. For those, is that just an outgrowth though of your team is aggressive on the bases and you got to live with a couple of those or – there were a couple there that you're saying, hey, you shouldn't make those in any circumstances. No, I thought uh, we're an aggressive team. You know, you're gonna you're gonna make outs on the bases if you're if you're aggressive. And and uh, but I, it wasn't that we slid past second base one time, and that's easy to do. If, uh, if you guys feel like it, go ahead and get a running start. <laughs> see if you get it. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think. But uh, in the one time we got thrown out of third base, the ball went through the catcher's legs and hit the umpire and bounced right back to the catcher. That's bad luck. So, uh, but we didn't, we didn't play bad. We didn't, we didn't pitch very well early on, but our bullpen was really good. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to come out tomorrow. Now they feel good about themselves. They know they can beat us. We know they can beat us. The fans know they can beat us. So we know we have to play well. Anything in particular you saw from Hampton that kind of contributed to the struggles? I don't know. They had a really good approach against them. Everybody knows how he pitches, and if you have a good approach against them, that's what will happen. But uh, he'll he'll learn from it. Mike's gave you pretty solid uh, bit of relief there too. Is that a little bit more encouragement as you had to come with conference play? Yeah, that was that was better than good. That was really good when we needed it. You know, he was he was blowing their bats up and did a really good job, and uh, that's that's really encouraging. You know, He'll, he'll get out there more often. He keeps doing that. Uh, the 14 strikeouts tonight, I mean, in my opinion, you got some inconsistency behind the plate there. But with that said, I mean, your team hasn't struck out a lot this season. So, I mean, surprised uh, at they, all by – They uh, – the first kid has a really sneaky fastball that uh, the numbers on the board aren't indicative of how it comes out of his hand. And the second guy has as good a breaking ball as you're going to see. That was pretty good. So uh, an umpiring behind the plate is about as easy as it is sliding into second base and holding on to the base. It's not as easy as you think. So uh, to expect those guys to be perfect is unrealistic. So I uh, just hope that it doesn't go against you too much. Do you have your batters change approach mid-game when you know there might be a little bit wider of a strike zone than usual, or do you just have that's them play pretty, the game? That's pretty rare to do that. You can't. If you start hitting according to an umpire, it's, hitting's hard enough if you change what you're doing in the middle of the game. So, no, we just we just try and rely on, on who we are. You're just speaking of approach, how did you feel your team's approach was, but, you know, with runners on base, two outs, those situations? You know, you, you try not to. Hit, hitting's hard enough. If you try and hit differently according to different situations, if you if you have a swing with nobody on base and a swing with a man on second and a swing with a man on third, you'd never get a hit ever. You just uh, try and stick to our middle of the field approach that, that we do, and that's how we win. And if, if you keep the right approach, it doesn't matter where the guys are on base. It works for any situation. So, uh, But, I mean, all credit goes to them. They played a great game. What can you say about Grant Hussey maturing at the plate? You know, he's had some struggles to start the year, but he's really coming around the last week yeah. and change. Yeah, he's uh, starting to feel confident at the plate, doing his thing. And we, we need him in the middle of the lineup. He can drive runs in. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see him starting to come around. This is kind of a question out of pure curiosity, but when the infield is playing J.J. like they were today, is there – a, a temptation for him to just you know, lay down a butt down the third base line. Yeah, we've tried that a couple times this yeah. year, and, and wouldn't do it if wouldn't even think about it if he wasn't capable of stealing second base. But he can run and steal second, yeah. and it's just like hitting a double. So yeah, there's always that temptation there. But uh, you know, you get greedy and, and want him to hit doubles and homers sure. with guys on base. And, uh, so yeah, he'll he'll do whatever. We we talk about it. Kansas do anything, or are they good particularly at cutting down on the running game a little bit? Something like that, you know, never got going tonight. Yeah, they're. I mean, it's you can you can stop the running game if you're quick to the plate, and their their guy was quick to the plate. 
I mean, th I think we got some hits because of it, and he walked some guys because of it. We just uh, didn't get enough hits at the right time. Have you ever seen a shift like that on JJ this year? Because infield was playing him one way, outfield was obviously playing him yeah, a, it's a all, different way. It's all based on scouting reports and tendencies and where he hits the ball. Because he'll hit a double to left center just as fast as he'll hit a line drive, you know, down first baseline. So, yeah, that's just a numbers game. Yeah. Robbie Corco to get to start for you on Sunday. What did you see from him his last year, four or five outings or so? Enough to give him a start on Sunday. You know, he's he's a pretty talented kid, and he's got one really good start under his belt at Maryland and did a really good job. And, and uh, anxious to see what he can do on Sunday. For, for a freshman to, you know, he got roughed up a little bit there in some of those early outings for him, but then to bounce back and really perform the way he has over the last you know, four or five outings again. Uh, what does it say about him and his character? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's got a really high ceiling. He's got he's got a chance to be a superstar here. So, uh, you know, we'll just he takes his lumps early in his career, just like Alec Manoa and Michael Grove and all those superstars did. So, uh, but he'll he'll fight his way through it. And he'll be better off for it in the long run.